Bad weather, no doubt, helping to make it another tough summer for air travel. Travelers have dealt with thousands of delays over the July 4th holiday. And yesterday, Delta Airlines CEO Ed Bastian told us his industry needs to stay within its capabilities, including on air traffic control. Join us to talk about this and much more. Transportation Secretary Mayor Pete Buttigieg. Does anyone still say that, um, Mr. Secretary? Yeah, all the I don't time. Know. And I'm I'm happy to answer to it. That's a compliment to me. <laughs> Secretary Mayor Pete. Yeah, exactly. Well, it is good to, you know, when everybody in the whole world knows, uh, knows you by, you know, your first name. It's kind of cool. Weather has played, played a part. But we do have some money to spend uh, as far as the infrastructure goes. So should the FAA, do we need to, to improve the FAA? It, it, it's hard to do this, obviously, 50,000. Uh, takeoffs and landings a day and staffing and weather. It, it, can we make it better with more money uh, for the FAA, Mr. Secretary? Yeah, no question. I mean, first I want to emphasize uh, some of the improvements that we've seen. If you compare to a year ago, even on so-called blue sky days when weather was, was not a problem, uh, we were seeing uh, some major, major delays. That's not happening so much this year. We have been hit with severe weather on uh, certain days this summer. Obviously, that's going to have an impact. Now, we can't control the weather, but there are a lot of other things that we can work on, and we are. Part of that's airport infrastructure. We're working on things like uh, what's called an end-around taxiway, which basically means that the plane doesn't have to cross the end of a runway when it's getting ready to take off. That can yield a time savings and a safety benefit because it's one uh, less point where you have a risk of a runway incursion. So we're investing in that in, in places like Charlotte, uh, taxiway improvements in places like Little Rock. Uh, but then there's also just making sure we have the air traffic control system that we need. You know, if we're going to uh, keep pressing the airlines, as, as I have been, on their performance, their investments, their scheduling. We've got to make sure as a country we're doing the same thing on the public sector side, investing in our airports, investing in our runways and taxiways, and maybe most importantly of all, investing in our people, making sure that our air traffic controllers and other FAA personnel have the technology they need to succeed, and simply making sure there are enough of them trained and uh, at their positions. There is a, a substantial gap between where we are today and where I want us to be in terms of staffing. That didn't build up overnight. That, that's uh, really taking years to get to this point, so we won't fix it overnight. But uh, I think we can take quick steps to make a big difference, and that's exactly what we're doing. We're bringing on 1,500 new air traffic controllers this year. We're requesting the resources to do 1,800 next year and keep going until we're at the level we need to be. Uh, retrofitting, uh, and it's not just for 5G. It's You know, sometimes they, they, there's a, something is identified that, that maybe wasn't to, to, uh, up to standard, so they have to go on fixing. Would you see, do you think airlines book flights knowing that they're not going to eventually follow through on that? They, I mean, everybody likes to have uh, planes that are full, but that's a bad thing to do. Do you, do, have you heard evidence of that, Secretary? And, and uh, I guess we should do, that, that shouldn't be something we just, you know, turn, turn a, a blind eye to. That, that can't happen. That's exactly right. So if they do and we determine that they have, we're going to take action. We actually have some active enforcement processes right now looking into allegations of unrealistic scheduling. When an airline sells a ticket on a flight that they know that they can't realistically serve, that is not only unfair to the customer. If you think about it, this is also a big competition issue, right? You could have uh, airlines trying to unfairly compete, grab a hold of, uh, of market share in certain routes by overpromising. Uh, now, again, I, I would give the airlines credit for scheduling more conservatively this year than last year, which is not an easy thing to do because we also see this demand that's off the charts. June 30th, TSA reported the uh, largest number of passengers ever. And on that day, even though there was, there was weather rippling through the system, cancellation rates stayed below 3%. I think in part that reflects the schedules being more realistic than they were a year ago. But, uh, yeah, anytime we find credible evidence that an airline has not been offering realistic scheduling, uh, we're, we're going to look into that and we're going to take action because they have to be prepared to service the tickets that they sell to be fair to passengers and uh, as a matter of competition fairness, too. Secretary, how's it going with, with the, the IRA, or I'm sorry, the infrastructure, uh, the, the money that, that we have? And it's a good problem to have. Um, but how much has is, is gone out there? There is there an urgent need for it. And I would just ask you, is, is permitting and red tape and regulation, 
now that you're on, the, I wouldn't say the other side of things, but now that you'd like to get all these things done and see real, real progress made, are you running into things that you wish could be reformed a little bit to make things easier, or, or is it all absolutely necessary? Yeah, look, we're, we're definitely at the phase where those issues around delivery, around red tape are, are looming larger and larger. Here's the way I think about our progress on this. So the first year of this administration, we, we spent most of that year just fighting to get the bill passed, actually making it happen, striking that bipartisan deal under President Biden's leadership uh, and, and getting those funds. And then the second year, with all of those new programs that were created, it, it took a, a huge amount of work setting up the program, setting up the, the, the architecture or, or the plumbing, if you will, to move all of that money through. So if the first year was about the bill passing and the second year was about the programs launching, now we're in the third year, which is about the money moving and then ultimately the dirt flying. And for that to actually happen, there are a ton of steps between when I get to call the senator, call the governor, call the mayor with the good news, hey, your project got picked, and actually see those, those shovels turning in the ground. Yep. We're working to make sure on our end that we make the process as easy as we can. It can be simple sounding things like a, a notice of funding opportunity, which is the kind of core document in these grant programs, making sure that there are less than 100 pages uh, whenever we can, that they don't proliferate in terms of how complicated they are, uh, making sure that we have uh, processes where we're helping some of these project sponsors. Because remember, we're funding the work, but, but we're not actually hiring the contractors, doing the bids, right? It's, it's the transit agency or the airport authority or the city or the state DOT that we're funding. So we want to really work with them, especially the smaller ones that don't have as much experience doing this kind of work. A lot of rural areas, which are some of the most important areas for us to support, you can't just assume that they're going to have a big staff that knows how to do federal processes. And then, you know, to the extent that the process can be improved and reformed, you know, as long as those core policy objectives are met, that the process is fair, that it's environmentally responsible, that we meet those high standards of, of stewardship and accountability for, for taxpayer dollars. You know, we're, we're not going to be doctrinaire about keeping everything the way it's always been. Let's, yeah. let's find ways to make it simpler and easier anytime we can.